conception of SX-61? It's a good question. Um, SX-61 started um, in about, I'd say, 1999. Um, basically, I was looking for a band, and uh, I found this great, great, great guitar player, which, um, which I met through college and all this, and all that stuff. And um, he introduced me to the other two members, which were brothers, which is Derek and Derek And we started playing, and that's how we got together. That's how the birth of it was. What do we believe in? But we're not a political band. It's, um, it's a battle that you don't have to fight yet. You do it later in life. But we believe in um, basically just, you know, freedom, freedom to express yourself, freedom to, uh, freedom to download music for free, which is something that is a very hot topic right now. I'm pro Napster, always have been, always will. Um, although I do understand that with Metallica, we oppose it so much. Because their, their position is very logical, but ours is... You know, how much money do you really need? You, know, you don't need 50 million dollars, you just need 20, you know what I mean? But, um, I don't know, I've always been a kind of um, an idealist in that kind of way. So I think that music should be free, or some part of it should be free. And, um, spread the music around and it's, it's better, it's self-promotion. Influences as in, as in for music, I would say, just like well, what we were talking about earlier, which is just the whole, the whole grunge thing happened at a time where when you're 11 to when you're 15 is when you take in all the influence in your sponge, you know, you absorb everything. And, and it just hit us very hard because that's my generation, right? So, you know, ten years later, I'm creating music that I hope people will notice that is it's a direct influence, and it is, and it's obvious. But um, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, carry on the kind of alternative rock banner. You know, this is us. Ten years later, you know, we're still here. You know what I mean? That's it. I've always thought, um, always, that music is live music. Studio, you know, Guns N' Roses takes five years per album or more. See, what could possibly take you so long? You know, what, 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 what is it? it? It's so hard when you're a music fan and you hear something on a record and it sounds great and you pay to go see it live and it fucking sucks. This can't be. Like, if I'm not that good live, I'm not gonna make it sound better on the CD because that's kind of a deceit. So what we do is we. Our process in the studio is we create in the studio and much of what you hear, I won't tell you which parts, but what you hear on the finished album is completely improvised. We like to jam a lot, you know. That's, I believe in that as a musician. You know I mean? And we, I, I, I think we've come to a point where we have a very solid live performance. You know what I mean? It's, I, I would tape every single live you know, performance and sell it later because I believe in, in the live thing and the connection with the people. You know, it sounds corny, but it's true. Well, the recording process was uh, a very long one, but a very beautiful one, because it, um, it was done very independently, very um, kind of artisty in that way, without um, commercial pressures from labels. No such no deadlines, no nothing. Went to the best studio, you know, in one of the five best studios in Latin America, which is Estudio del Sur. And um, which many people thought was kind of stupid because, you know, you can't just start like that. But I said, yeah, you can. So we went. And we didn't have anything planned either. It was, um, it was basically, let's go to the studio and we'll create in the studio and we'll, um, just the whole album will be directed in the studio, which is something that no one does because it's too expensive. But we went and we, and, and, and you know, it was just energy in the air and we just, 
there was no plan, so it was an unplanned album. Basically, the songs were there, but the album, the concept, the sound wasn't there. And uh, it was it was a great experience. I mean, Studio uh, Suite is a great, great, great fucking studio. I mean, wow. So the priority in, in your life as a musician, as a concept, is to reach the light. So that's why it's priority light. And um, that's basically it. It's just very, we're very um, fun people. You know, it's a very happy, happy. We don't have a grudge. You know, it's not angry music. It's very happy music. Sad, yeah, but sad is part of happy. You know what I mean? I think the last thing we are is angry. We're not angry at all. Um, I think yeah, we, can, we can sense that in the music. It's very, you know, it's not light, but it's not angry. You know what I mean? So that more or less explains the um, the title of the album. Um, the sound is very natural. Obviously, there's a tendency towards um, the two sides of, of what rock can be, which is, um, you know, faster, more electric songs and slower, more, you know, emotional ballads. Which, uh, which are the two areas that we, that we want to do, you know what I mean? And that I think the album has a good mix of both. Um, very acoustic, very simple. I, 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 I want the album to be, you know, remembered as something simple that was just, you know, guitar, bass, you know, drums and vocals. Just a very basic rock band. Just something that you have to go back to because, you know, ten years from now, what's going to be on the radio is the same four instruments, unless it's totally electronic. So something has to happen where it all comes back to the guy with the guitar who entertains, you know what I mean? So it's all like a concept of entertainment, you know what I mean? I mean, in concert, you know, a guy with a guitar alone can be a much bigger source of entertainment than a huge band with synthesizers and, you know... Um, basically, well, we just want to kind of finish the album and um, kind of maybe leave some space to rest a little bit. I don't know if that's uh, that important, but we've been... It's emotionally very kind of hard, so once it's out, I think it was maybe a month or two break. And then we'd like to tour a lot, which is something that in Latin America isn't that, you know, regular. It's not, it's not like in the States or in Canada where you have an album and you go out and you tour it for, you know, a year and that's all you do. Here it's more or less it's a very small market, so what you do is take out the album and release it. And then if you tour or not, is more of how many times do you play in the same city, you know what I mean? We want to tour, we want to go to 10 cities, hopefully go to Argentina or maybe, you know, Peru and stuff like that. Basically the idea behind that was to just promote ourselves um, out there in a more independent way because we do truly believe in the independent way. Um, we obviously do recognize and know that you need distribution and you need marketing and you can't do all those things on your own, although I'd love to think that we could, but we can't. Um, but we do like to be in control of how things are developing and when and how. So basically the promo single is to just let people know that we're out there, you know, that we are independent, um, we're not sold out to the system, but that's not, that's not true. Um, but basically, and also as a media tool to get better distribution. Um, I think that's important. So we're going we're gonna to do that before releasing the full album, which I hope is November, maybe December the latest, you know. And um, that's why we're doing it. I think it will be a good, a good way for people to get to know us a little bit. And I